So we've already talked a little bit about neratinib and lapatinib, the other oral tyrosine kinase inhibitors that tocatinib could put, be put in the same group with. These agents, uh, again, are pills um, and they are tyrosine kinase inhibitors. What's a little bit different with tocatinib is that it's HER2 specific and so doesn't have the side effects of rash and diarrhea that can be very common when we block EGFR or HER1. I think there are clearly other drugs in this space. We use pertuzumab in combination with trastuzumab and ataxane very commonly in the first line for two positive metastatic breast cancer space. And we use TDM1 uh, in the second line space quite a bit. We've had another newly approved drug, trastuzumab and tamzine, or DS8201, as it was called in clinical trials. This has recently been improved and appears to be a very active drug as well. I think moving forward, these drugs in combination with novel chemotherapy backbones in combination with HER2 blockade, we're gonna be sequencing these drugs a little bit based on patients, their preference, their disease course, and how quickly they've been progressing, as well as their sites of disease, including brain metastases. I think how we sequence these drugs um, are a little bit dependent on what patients have received before. Uh, so patients that have already received pertuzumab uh, and may or may not have received TDM1 uh, very close to when they relapsed with metastatic disease, I think are a little bit different than somebody that prevent, presents with de novo metastatic disease and have not received standard therapies. For those patients, I probably would be marching down um, our traditional landscape where I would give taxane, trastuzumab in combination with pertuzumab and then TDM1 and then use this as a traditional third line regimen. But for patients with brain metastases, I certainly would be uh, very willing to use this earlier because this can be a huge clinical problem for those patients. I think sometimes in oncology, we're a little bit um, too reactionary instead of uh, thinking ahead about what's going to happen. The statistic is that 50% of people will develop brain metastases with HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. So I'm very encouraged about thinking of using this in the earlier lines or even really earlier lines, such as in the adjuvant space for high-risk patients, to think about preventing these brain metastases and not just treating them once they form.